Hari Om. We'll chant from verse number 8. Maye Vamana Adhatsva Maye Buddhim Niveshaya Nivasishya Simai Yeva Ata Urdhvam Na Samshaya Ata Chittam Samadhatum Nashak no shima is theram Abhyas yoga natataha Mamit chaptum dhananjaya Abhyas sepesamarthosi Mat karma paramo bhava Madar Tamapikar Mani Kurvan said him of Apsyasi Atai Tadapyashaktosi Kartum Madyoga Mashritaha Sarva Karma Palatyagam Tata Kuru Yatatma Van So Bhagavan says that both a Vekta Upasana as well as Vekta Upasana, worshipping God with form or worshipping God who is beyond all form, both paths lead to the same goal. Both paths leads to God realization or a state of enlightenment. But for those who are attached to the body and attached to the senses and the world around, it will be easy to follow the path of worshipping God with form. But those who have enough vairagya, they can follow this path of a Vekta Upasana. So Bhagavan says, uh, gives a step-by-step -step, uh, process also. He says, to place your mind and intellect in me uh, completely will lead you to me. So mind is all our emotions, our heart, and our senses also, and buddhi, is uh, that which understands. So understanding gives uh, direction to our uh, attention and emotions gives uh, power, force. So whatever we are emotionally, we are passionate about, like people use that word no? nowadays, passion. If we are passionate about something, we get a great energy. Even a weak person suddenly gets a lot of energy if that passion comes. But uh, passion itself doesn't have any direction. It can be like a, it can move in any direction. So to give proper direction to our passion, we require sound understanding. And that understanding uh, happens th through the use of our intellect. So here Bhagwan says you Oh, you place your passion in me, be passionate about me, and place your intellect also in me. Have a sound understanding of God. Uh, with the help of the scriptures, we should understand what we mean by the term Ishvara, and how he is all pervading and expressing as this world. So intellect gives us the right understanding and uh, our mind gives us that passion. And with this mind and intellect placed in the Lord, in Ishwara, we will be able to attain Him. Bhagavan says, if you fail to keep your mind and intellect in me, then practice, follow the path of Abhyas. 
again and again place your mind and intellect in me. It might run, the mind will run around, so bring it back. Intellect will try to go in other field, bring it back and make your understanding more and more sublime and make your passion more and more pure towards God. So this is Abhyas. But even uh, Abhyas for some might be very difficult because the mind and intellect is something subtle and to place this mind and intellect in God is something uh, very subtle. So one may find it very difficult to follow this path. So for them Bhagavan says, you perform actions for me. Uh, make uh, acting for me itself as your supreme uh, agenda in life. So abhyas, abhyase api asamarthosi mat karma paramo bhava become mat karma paramaha become uh, like may your actions for me be your main goal. So all actions, whatever actions you perform, perform them for me. And by doing this, slowly and steadily, your mind will become pure, your intellect will become more refined, and you will be able to follow the subtle path of abhyas, and then will be able to place your mind and intellect in me. But some may say that to, to perform action for God is also very difficult. To dedicate all our actions to Ishwara is something very difficult. For that we require total dedication and absolute freedom from our selfishness and love for God and total faith in Him. So all these qualities are required to dedicate our actions to God. It's very difficult. Even so-called when we dedicate our actions to something, we have our own private agenda also. Hmm? Like the government officials, they, in their gadi, sometimes you find their relatives, friends, everyone traveling with the red light on. So we have our uh, own private uh, agenda. It is very difficult to dedicate our uh, actions to God completely, 100%. We have certain uh, actions which we perform for our own selfish uh, interest or for our own family or friends and all. So then what should I do? So Bhagwan gives a uh, technique for them. He says that if you are unable to perform actions for me completely, then taking uh, my support Taking refuge in me, taking my support, taking my blessings, whatever karmas you are doing and whatever results you gain through those karma, you, you dedicate those results to me. Sarva karma phalatyagam tatak kuru yatatmavan with your uh, mind and intellect under your control, your senses under your control, with your emotions under your control, whatever results come in your life, you just offer them to God. What does it mean? See, whatever action we perform, we get the result. We cannot escape the result. The results come, whether we like it or not, the results come. If we perform an action, the result is bound to be there. So I cannot say that, oh, I will perform the result, but uh, let the action, uh, results, I mean, I will perform the action and I don't want the result. It cannot happen like that. Results will come. So what does it mean that I have to renounce the result? To renounce, as I said yesterday, to renounce the result uh, very uh, in a very paradoxical way, to renounce result means to accept whatever comes without judgment, without uh, without complaint, without resistance, with with uh, love, just as we accept prasad. Okay, whatever actions I am doing, some of them I am dedicating to God, and some of them I am doing uh, selfishly. 
So I get the results in life, and results come in the form of uh, dvandva, in the form of uh, the pairs, like I get a victory sometimes, I get defeat, I get uh, some benefit or there is some loss, there is some pleasure or sometimes there is pain, pain different uh, degrees of uh, um, results I get. And at times I might have some idea in my mind, I don't get the result according to that, I get something else also. So whatever results, so present whatever condition we are in, that is the result of our past, our body, our health, our family, our society, our uh, whatever condition, our status in life, our state of happiness, our state of uh, what you call fulfillment or knowledge, whatever we have now is the result of the past. See, our, uh, the world flows from past to the future. It's a flow. So what was there in the past alone is there in the present with a little change. Yesterday you were here. So today you also you are here. So what is the difference between yesterday and today? Not much of a difference, little change. So if you find actually even uh, if you fast forward some, uh, some movies and all, you will find ta -ta 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 -ta. But little change is happening and it is moving forward. Similarly, past itself little modified becomes the present and present little modified becomes the future. It's not something totally different which happens. If yesterday there was an apple, today also that apple will undergo some modification, some change, and tomorrow also it will, uh, it will decay and die. So it is just a constant change happening. So past is coming in the form of present, and present is flowing into the future. So whatever we have now is the result of the past. This is very logical, rational thing. There is no, no doubt about it. Many people have complained, oh, what is this, everything, how can we say that it is the result of the past? It is most scientific. Whatever body I have is because of the past, yesterday's body. Yesterday's body was there because of the day before yesterday's body. And that was there because of the past. So in this way, my body, my mind, my thoughts, my ideas, my desires, my knowledge, my faith, everything is a flow. In the present uh, moment, I modify it a little bit and send it into the future. Sometimes I develop greater faith, sometimes I develop lesser faith. So I keep modifying it. So present moment, as a human being, we have the capacity to modify our, our uh, karmas. We can modify it, we can transform it, we can bring about a lot of change. Hmm. And uh, some little changes also if we keep bringing in future, you will find that a big uh, change has taken place. So this is how the world functions. So the present moment or present time is the result of my past karmas. So what is the meaning of giving up this, or surrendering this, or dedicating this to God? It means to accept it completely. Accept the present moment, respond to it accordingly, and then move forward. Don't resist it. Don't fight with it. Because you have performed actions for yourself. You have not dedicated all your actions to God. So whatever results come, accept it, develop that attitude of total acceptance of the result of action. This is a very interesting and very important um, attitude which uh, Bhagwan is indicating here. If we can develop that attitude, we will become qualified to go on a higher plane. We can do the higher sadhana of performing actions for God. Many times, people what they do, they want to perform actions 
but the results uh, always uh, may not come according to their choice. So there is a lot of resistance, a lot of complaint, a lot of uh, uh, all sorts of things we do. The result itself, not tackling the result properly itself is our main problem. Not to know how to face or tackle or respond to the results which come becomes our problem. If we know how to respond to those results, we will be able to deal with all situations effectively. So here Bhagavan says that you accept. Accept doesn't mean you don't do anything. Accept means you, it has come, so accept it as prasad. And then respond to it according to your present wisdom. It's like a person, uh, like we grow our, uh, by age and all. So, so you, when you grow, you accept it. When the hairs turn gray, you accept it. Not accepting is resisting and all, and somehow painting it and all. Okay, it's okay to paint, I mean, in the sense, uh, what, whatever it is called. But uh, one should be able to accept things gracefully. When we accept a different type of mind is uh, developed, a different type of personality gets developed. And that personality helps us to uh, become free of our attachment. We rise in our spiritual uh, journey. It's a very uh, interesting uh, phenomena. So Bhagavan says, if you cannot dedicate all your actions to me, then sarva karma phalatyagam kuru yatatmavan. But that for that you require total control over your senses and your mind and your, your desires, your, your own personality, when we have that control, then we are able to accept. And we are, when we are able to accept it, we become free from the, uh, from the bondage of this world. A different, uh, different energy gets developed into us. A different uh, energy gets uh, uh, invoked or it comes into us. We should not have any preconceived uh, ideas. Then if we accept, then we become totally aware of the present moment. See, those who have strong insistence that aisa hi hona chahiye, aisa nahi hona chahiye, they live in memories or they live in imagination. Hmm. We want, I want it to happen this way and all. So we live in imagination. Okay. If you want, I can give an example of cricket. Huh? <laughs> now it's a hot thing, no? so let me give that example. Next week, I don't know, I might give some other example. So if I am a good batsman, then when I play, okay, some idea I can have that this bowler is there, how he will bowl. But exactly where the ball will fall and how it will come, exactly, I don't know. Huh? I may have a rough idea. If I am a good batsman, I will have a rough idea of it. But exactly how it will be there, I do not know. So if I am a good batsman, I will not have a preconceived idea that I will play this way only. 